Speaking of Banana Republic, uh, 3.30 our time, the official vote on the impeachment will take place. 3.30 our time, obviously 6.30 on the East Coast. We will continue to monitor that and cover everything and anything that is the impeachment and the impeachment inquiry and, of course, the actual impeachment, which is going to – let's let's all – call for what it is going to take place at 3.30 today. It will pass. He will be impeached, but it will not pass the Senate. So uh, I mentioned earlier today, you know, some of our listeners, they're they're very gracious and they send us cheese and crackers and they appreciate what we do and others don't like what we do, but they still listen. I appreciate both of them. They they send campaign cheese and crackers. Only only campaign. Fair enough. So we have a a woman who, um, who sent me a message today listening to the show. Her name is Diane Donovan. And don't know who she is, but I guess she she listens to the show, obviously. This is the message she sends me today. And remember, she's commenting on, the, I would imagine, the first hour of the show, not the pigeon comment, but uh, in regards to the Trump impeachment, my opinions on Donald Trump, and some callers that called in and said some idiotic things, and I don't let them rant. I'm not going to give them a platform and rant for five or ten minutes. And, and, you know, if they say something stupid, racist, whatever the case may be, I call them out on it. We move on to the next call because we don't have one or two callers that call into this show. Maybe other shows have a couple callers an hour. But, you know, we we, we do a pretty good job and handle as many calls as we can. So anyway, with that being said, here is what Diane uh, Donovan, uh, I don't know who she is. She's a listener. She sent me a message. Here's what she said. This is not that long ago. She said, Shapiro, you are so incredibly rude. The way you cut people off and speak over them and call them names if they don't agree with you and then turn around and condemn Trump for saying things like you say. Hypocrisy at its finest. And by the way, Avenatti uh, has been a lawyer who is dirty uh, as, as the day is long. Okay, so for, so I responded, but I guess I'll just respond on the air. My days are actually very short. Okay, first of all, I'm not the president of the United States. I'm not an elected official. So to make an analogy and compare me to an elected official that is the leader of the free world is completely ignorant. You are an ignorant person for making that statement, number one. Number two, obviously by your political beliefs, you are on the right and you are against Mike Lovinati as pretty much anyone is on the, on the right because Mike Lovinati has been going after Donald Trump and Republicans for years. So we have already know that you're a bias and that you are an ignorant human being. Then uh, she goes on to say that you're not even capable of taking constructive criticism, okay? So I would ask her the same question that I would ask uh, the, uh, one of the people who called in an hour number one who talked about Michael Avenatti and said he's got baggage. And then I said, what's your favorite TV show? And he says, well, Bill O'Reilly. And then he admitted, you know, that he was wrong. I would ask her the same question. Uh, That's still so yeah. funny. Oh, so man. We have host. We have host on, on this. It's all right, Gilbert. It's all right, man. Yeah. We have hosts on this station, and those some of them have come on to our show. Uh, Mm -hmm. I I would mention Mark Levin. He was very gracious coming on Mm -hmm. our show. And by the way, we had a very good discussion, a very good debate. He said he enjoyed coming on with us. Mark Levin calls people idiots on his show all the time. And he would be the first one to admit that. Okay? So this is the same person that has a problem with me because of maybe I don't like Donald Trump. And let me say something else, too. There have been people on Facebook recently over the last few days, Pat Cassell being one of them. OK, who has gone nuts on social media. And for those who don't know, Pat Cassell fills in for me sometimes when I'm not doing the show. Yeah. And, and, as, and you the, know, as the conservative side of the Vegas. Station. This is what drives me nuts about people like Diane Donovan. OK, they assume because I don't like Donald Trump and, and, and most of it has nothing to do with his policies. Just I just think he's a bad guy because I attack a man who constantly cheats on his wives, who has unprotected sex with a porn star months after his wife has a child, who goes after John McCain, a POW, attacks him because he was captured, who goes after Gold Star families, who goes after a woman based on her looks. Because I dislike the man that is Donald Trump, that must they must assume that I hate all conservatives, that I hate Republicans. They must assume that I'm a liberal or a libtard, as they like to say. They must assume that I'm a snowflake. That is an ignorant way of having a discussion. I don't like Donald Trump because of many of those reasons that I just pointed out. I wanted to make that very clear. So thank you, Diane. If you don't like what we do, go listen to a right-wing conservative talk show host that talks the same way I talk. You just agree with his politics, and you don't agree with mine. Two five seven. Hey, by the way, Diane, you're spot on. Brian and Donald Trump do have a lot in common. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And let me father- clarify one thing, Brian, about <laughs> you as well, too. There's an indication in there that you just unsolicitedly call people names, okay? This is what you do, and this is what a lot of people do. A lot of hosts It's do. also what Trump When you does. say something that is idiotic, you're going to be called an idiot. When you do something or say something that is moronic, you're going to be called a moron, okay? When you say things that are ridiculous, you're going to get called out on yeah. your ridiculousness. Simple as that. Yeah. All right. Two five. I agree. Thank you for backing yes. me on that. Two five seven. And, and, and thank you, thank you, Lefty Steve Carlton. Lefty in the house. Two five seven five three nine six. Let's go to Ron. Ron, you're next on the Vegas What's take. Up, Thanks for calling in. What's going on? Hey, Ron. Don't scream. Good morning, gentlemen. Don't How scream, are Ron. You? How are you? Doing Good. great. And happy New Year and a happy Christmas, guys. And thank I hope you. you drink a lot of champagne. <laughs> I just had my 
seventy fourth birthday on December first. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, Ron. I got a good idea for you guys. Yes, sir. But, you know, yesterday we had this protest Trump all over the United States of America. They had like a thousand or two thousand places, you know, and they had all this anti Trump rally stuff. Well what you guys gotta do is start this well, we're gonna vote for Trump rally. And you'd be the first radio station in America to start doing it because, after all, you guys didn't. You never voted for Trump. You never voted for Hillary. Yeah. Well, you guys would be the first number. Ron, one. I will you know, say Ron, this. Ron, that's so, actually that's actually you've called in probably eighty three times. That's actually a really great idea. Ron, I will Isn't say this. That a great it idea? is a good great idea. Ron, I yeah. will say this. And by the way, I do appreciate your phone call, Ron. I I will say yeah. this. There is a five percent <laughs> chance that I will vote for Donald Trump, and I will make this promise to you, Ron. Okay, if I do decide to make the announcement that I am voting for Donald Trump, we will do what we can to make that happen. Two five seven five three nine six. Go to Mike. Mike, you're next on the Vegas Take. What's going on, Mike? What's up, Mike? Good morning, gentlemen. How are you doing? Good. Doing real well. Thanks for waiting. What's on your mind? Uh, I just want to make a comment. What a deviant with the pigeon hats, man. That guy or girl, it's probably some whack job girl that's got 10,000 pigeons at home, but... <laughs> Saving the pigeons, but anyway. Uh, well, what's wrong with that? Why are you going to insult her? It's, it's probably Jennifer Jason Lee from Single White Female or someone like that. No, it's right? probably it's probably the woman from Home Alone too. <laughs> I could see it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know who I don't know who either of those two are, but you know what, <laughs> Brian? The reason one one thing I want one of my comments the reason our president won't populate the hearings or the Senate trial with self incrimination is obvious. Uh, the burden of proof is always and always has been upon the accuser. If they're going to accuse our president of something, by golly, they better put it forward. They okay, so it. can I ask you this then, Mike? Uh, forget about the president for a second. What about others in his administration that uh, the Democrats want to testify under oath? You think it's okay for him to block them to try to get – they're trying to get as much evidence as possible to make the best decision they can make. And by the way, I'm including Republicans in this because they need to hear it. Mulvaney, John Bolton, you, th you don't think they should testify? I think uh, – well, no, they, they had their chance already, uh, Brian, but – what do you mean no, they, they didn't have a chance? Didn't. That's they not didn't true. They didn't testify in the House. That's not true, in Mike. In the impeachment inquiry. They didn't. Let me ask you a question, Mike. God no, for no, no. No, what? we wanted to bring witnesses. They wouldn't let us. That's oh, no way. Not true. That's no not true. way. All right. All not right, even Mike. close. Mike, not even the same neighborhood. Mike, Mike we appreciate the oh, phone call, but let me, the wait, best. Wait, I got another thing to say. Oh, okay. oh I can't wait to hear it. Go ahead. Uh, Bill Clinton didn't just get a blowjob in the White House. He had full blown sex with that girl day after, you know, every day or every other day. It wasn't just. Thank you for clearing uh, that, yeah, Mike. Yeah, thank we, you for. We thank didn't you. know that at all. We didn't know about the details. I can tell you, I'm I'm glad, it's only I'm been glad 22 you, years. You told us Mike, that. It was, Mike, it was nice Mike, and graphic. Mike, I really enjoyed it. Mike, yeah. thank you very much. Mike, based on the phone call that we just had, I can almost guarantee that you've never had that type of situation happen to you unless you paid for it. Two five seven five three nine six. Let's go to Brady. Brady, you're next on the Vegas Take. Go ahead. Hey, what's up, Brady? Yeah, good morning, gentlemen, and BB Shapiro. How are you today? BB. BB. No yeah. one's Netanyahu. Netanyahu Shapiro. Oh, buffoon Brian. Oh, come on. Buffoon Brian. Ooh. Well, you've really started off this phone call very well, Brady. Yeah, you've really, really started off very well. Starting, uh, I also. Did, are you guys? Uh, the, are you familiar with Squab? Have you ever had that? Are you familiar with a good caller, somebody you can call into a show yeah, and make you know, an excellent when you're talking point? talking about pigeons, it's pigeon meat. You, you, you've never had squab. It's a delicacy. Yeah, I, I, it's no, a, there is. Yeah, you're, he's right. Brady's right. There is a delicacy okay. with pigeon yes. with respect to okay. uh, the but, culinary. So, Brady, I will not go out on a date with you, and I will not have pigeon meat with you if that's what you were going to ask. So where, so where do I send my squab and the, and the mega hat wearing pigeons to? Uh, you can send you can send that uh, the same way you can send we send most of your phone calls and that's up your ass. What do you think about that, Brady? I don't know. You better send it to your hooker. That's reason. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Side. Brady, you shouldn't. Brady, you shouldn't Thank talk you. about your wife like that. All right. So here's what Why we're going to do. Why does Brady got to bring in Shaft personal life into this? Why does that's he have to do that? So Brady, Brady's <laughs> Brady's doing hey, hey, Brady, I have to admit that was a really good call. It was a great it's, call. Yeah, Outstanding yeah. call. Top notch all Thank around. Thank you, Brady. So here's what we're going to do, guys. We got to take a break, but um, when we come back, I can promise you this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we all know this guy, right, from Saturday Night Live. We all know him <laughs> from, you know, w w let me ask you this. Chris Night at the Roxbury. Night at the Roxbury is certainly on. Yes. one of the big ones, one of my favorites. Yes. But this guy has been around for a long, long time. He actually broke his neck. This is a crazy story. He broke his neck not, not that long ago. He's yeah. actually he, performing. He was doing a skit. Yeah. For the Golden Girls in 2001. Uh, oh, that's he dedication. Actually, he actually yeah. is headlining at the Jimmy Kimmel Cl Comedy Club. So uh, the man... Known as Chris Catan. Yes, I can't wait. I, I've never interviewed this guy before. so I'm I will not call him Mango. I will not do it. <laughs> no, please don't do that. But this is going to be a lot of fun, guys. Chris Catan is coming up next on the show. Really looking forward to talking to him. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a quick break. we got C-Win in studio. we got 
the, the studio is just full of people, Load right? It up. It's just yes. full of people. Campaign. It. I am Mr. Shapiro. He is J.D. Sharp. We're going to take a quick break, and we will be back right after this. You're listening to The Vegas Take on the all-new 101.5 FM, 720 AM. K-